Mr. Speaker. GDP growth in 2018-19 will remain, unfortunately, too low for Mauritius to move on to reach high income country status. Budget deficit and public debt figures have become meaningless because of massive off-budget off manipulations, but the fact is that both the budget deficit and the public debt are unsustainable. Growing uncertainties threaten our balance of payments and our capacity to continue financing our international transactions. Approaching general elections have prompted some budgetary sweeteners, but have also, but also explain why certain vital decisions have been postponed. And so let me start with GDP growth. We all know that we had been promised a miracle economic. But when the present Minister of Finance, now Prime Minister, presented the 2016-2017 the budget in July, he came back to earth and predicted a 4.1 GDP growth. It turned out to be 3.9%, as we all know. A year later, Speaker, he again predicted a 4.1 GDP growth for 2017-2018. It was again 3.9%. Last year, last Thursday, rather, last Thursday, this year, the minister this time predicted for the third time and consecutive year, that GDP growth in 2018-2019 would be, again, 4.1%, which is not in itself enough for Mauritius to graduate to high-income country status. This is a fact, an economic fact. But in fact, GDP growth in 2018-19 will most probably again be less than 4.1%. If we go by investment and public capital outlays figures available to date. The speaker, total investment in 2018 is forecasted by Statistics Mauritius total investment to remain almost static, static at 7.2% of GDP. GDP. It's very low. Statistics Mauritius also expects the ratio of private investment to GDP to fall to 12.6% in 2006 and in 2008 from 13.2% in 2017. The last budget provided for capital outlays of 12.7 12 billion rupees in 2017-2018. In As at June 2018, the figures provided in the budget estimates themselves. As at June 2018, only 8.6 billion had been dispersed, had been spent. That is a shortfall of 36, of 36 uh, percent, Madam Speaker. 
In fact, as in previous years, the need to meet social and other current expenses whilst having to contain the budget deficit and public debt has, has uh, caused government to curtail capital spending. I hope I am proved wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But the above considerations indicate clearly that in 2018-2019, the 4.1 GDP growth target will unfortunately again be missed. Let me move on to the budget deficit and the public debt, Mr. Speaker. The Minister has predicted a 3.2% budget <coughs> deficit in this financial year and a 63.1% one, a of public debt by the end of June next year, by the end of this financial year. And Speaker, I have to say that these figures are meaningless, have become meaningless, because government now resorts, by now, to massive off-budget manipulations that artificially bring down both the budget deficit and the public debt. The fiscal deficit, the budget deficit, is underestimated by the incurring of expenditure in state-owned companies, special, special purpose vehicles, and special funds. A few examples. The Safe City Project is financed through the Mauritius Telecom. For billions of rupees, the 2,800 new social housing which are supposed to be built in the next uh, two years are to be constructed at the cost of the NHTC, at the cost of 12.7 billion rupees. More than 14 billion rupees will be, will be spent through the Metro Express Limited, uh, Limited for the construction of the Metro Express. Outside, all this outside budget considerations. More than 3 billion rupees will be spent through the Mauritius Multisport Infrastructure Limited, another government-owned uh, company, for the sports uh, complex at Côte d'Or, as we all know. Infrastructure, the, the new cancer unit, even the new cancer center unit, will be paid for through a race, recently registered SIC, Development Company Limited, which will finance 10 other projects. Replacement of pipes will be financed through, by millions of rupees, will be financed through a National Water Development Company Limited. Other government-owned companies spending billions include the CEB, the CEB Energy Company Limited, the CEB Green Energy Company Limited, and Landscope Mauritius Limited. And speaker, it is estimated that the consolidated budget deficit, including the above off-budget 
figures exceeded 4% of GDP in 2017-2018, and it is estimated that it will be, the budget deficit will be over 5% of GDP in 2018-2019 if we have recourse, as was the case in the past, to ordinary serious budget accounting. I repeat, we estimate, I estimate, that the budget deficit this ending financial year exceeded 4%. And we believe, I believe, that the budget deficit, when we take all this in consideration, for 2018-2019 will exceed 5% of GDP. And that, as the Honorable Prime Minister, Minister of Finance knows, and that in spite of billions received as grants from India. But of course those grants will only last a few more years. In the case of the public debt, uh, Madam Speaker, government uses uh, so-called international definition of public debt that includes the debt of only a select limited number of public enterprises like CEB, CWA, Wastewater Authority, National Pension Fund, whereas the IMF definition of public debt includes financial and non-financial entity, entities like Mauritius Telecom, State Bank of Mauritius, SICOM, MoBank, and the state-owned companies referred to above. And I give a few examples again. An ex Indian Exim Bank line of credit of $500 million, $500 million US dollars is being routed through State Bank of Mauritius. And a China Exim Bank line of credit is being extended to Mauritius Telecom for the Safe City uh, Project. Redeemable shares, redeemable preferential shares are being invested by those state-owned uh, uh, companies to allow an accounting trick, if I can call that, call, call that, call that this, so that it is not, so that preferential, reasonable preferential share are not included in the uh, public debt. Madam Speaker. Government, government now refers to partial repayment guarantees or annual lease payments, again to justify, to justify non-inclusion of the public in the uh, public sector debt. Mr. Speaker, I estimate, it is estimated, that all the above public, it is that all the above debt by government-owned companies and all government-guaranteed borrowing, if all this is included, public debt would reach or even exceed 70% of GDP, the way things are going. To such public debt, of course, must also be added substantial contingent liabilities like the one arising from the Betamax case. And Speaker, to me it is absolutely clear that such levels of budget deficit and public debt are simply unsustainable 
in the near future. In the, maybe not the near future, but in the more or less near future. What I find even more disturbing, and that will be probably my main point at this, in this part of my speech, what, I, what is even more disturbing to me, and should be to all of us, including government, are external threats looming over our capacity to finance our external <coughs> transactions. The current account of the country, Madam Speaker, which is one of the best measures of the economic health of any country, including, of course, Mauritius. Our current account deficit in, is, is, an, is in big deficit. Yet, the balance of payments has been in huge surplus these last years. And our international, as the Honorable Minister of Finance, Prime Minister said, and our international currency reserves have risen to their highest recorded level. Because, that is the key point, because the offshore banking, banking sector and the so-called global business companies, the GBCs, have been bringing into the country billions and billions of dollars that move on partly to be invested in India. And this allows us to live with this massive current account deficit. But again, it won't last forever, and I'll get to that. In fact, we have est estimated, I have estimated, we have estimated that total GBCs, net inflows, are estimated to represent some 20% of our GDP. Whereas the balance of payment surplus is only, as at present, 6% of GDP, Madam Speaker. It has also been estimated that excluding these GBC companies, these GBC uh, flows, the current account deficit would stand at a high level of over 10% of GDP. The disturbing fact is that these GBC flows are increasingly under threat. I explain myself. The formal elimination of the capital gains tax advantage under the Indian Mauritius Double Taxation Agreement, this final elimination will happen in April next year. That is tomorrow. That is when this elimination of the capital gains tax will really kick in. And then we shall, we shall be really measuring the impact on our offshore sector and especially on our GPCs, on our global companies. Uh, when I speak. OECD and European Union initiatives against offshore financial centers or tax havens that erode the tax base of developed countries are intensifying. The increase the increase in interest rates worldwide, led by the U.S., and a rising U.S. debt and a rising U.S. dollar will impinge on capital flows to offshore and developing financial centers like Mauritius. And speaker, all this means that the continued availability 
of GBC financing is subject to increasing uncertainty. And on top of that, we must ask, uh, add now the increasing risk of a global trade war and greater financial insolvability available uh, as the, the global economic and financial uh, situation becomes more disturbed, more difficult these days, as Madam Speaker said. This is, this is an opinion shared by top, by prominent central bankers, bankers and economists, including the governor of the Central Bank of India uh, these days. Again, Madam Speaker, I hope I am proved wrong. The near future will tell for the reasons which I've just given. And that, has, and that is why I am very worried as to how our economy, not just our offshore sector and our GBC companies, but our economy in general, under such influence, is going to evolve in the months and years ahead. I don't know what, I don't know what to sound totally, totally pessimistic. But I'm giving facts, and I am worried. I am very, aware, very worried that the GDP growth will not be sufficient. I'm very worried that the public deficit and the public debt are not sustainable in the medium term. And I'm even more worried what is going, as I've just said, what is going to happen to our offshore sector and GBC companies. This was, Madam Speaker, the main part of my intervention on uh, the economy. I'm, not going, I'm going now to move on to some of the measures that Bush do, which are contained in the budget, but if you do not mind, if we can break for now and then I'll pick up on that part of my speech. We, are, we have a right as a, as a country, as a, as a people, to know how much will be spent per year in terms of financial assistance to the CWA. And as for, I listened carefully to the uh, uh, Honorable Deputy Prime Minister when he talked about affair marge. I wasn't impressed, I'm even less impressed today. I find it quite extraordinary. We, we were, what is proposed is affair marge. He accused Alan, Honorable Alan Ganu of having proposed in the past a management contract. Completely different from affair marge. <laughs> well, honestly, let's be serious. Affair marge is affair marge. Management contract is management contract. You can't just say, well, it's the same thing. We agree, we are in full agreement. I, I was really surprised. But anyway, I'm not only in page. And let it. I hope we know what lies ahead. Affair marge, what, what is the intention of government? Affair marge, uh, either a contrat de gestion, management contract, if yes, what kind, or reorganization, because we read in details that supposedly the Prime Minister's office, which is by now a kind of parallel government, 
we read that, that the Prime Minister's office is, is, prepar is preparing a new management for the CW. From what we understand, there will be neither a fair marriage, no management contract, there will be a new management, recruitment of, of international staff, and so on. So, quel cacophonie. Therefore, we are entitled as a nation to hear more, and I hope that the uh, Honourable Prime Minister will have things to say uh, on that. I would say a few words now, Madam Speaker, on issues that, from my point of view, have been mishandled or negligé. A lot has been said, and I won't repeat, but I share the criticism by my, colleague, my colleagues, especially Honourable Reza Yutim, on the offshore sector, on the manufacturing sector, and the SMEs sector. I'm not, I won't repeat all their arguments, but the situation is not satisfactory as far as these three sectors are uh, concerned, as far as we are concerned. Save it. I listen again carefully to, to the Deputy uh, Prime Minister, but I'm, I'm, I am very worried because there is a strategic decision to be taken in CAB these days. Are we going to go ahead with this so-called combined cycle gas turbines plus liquefied natural gas later on? It's a vital decision. Et les avis divergent. Nous avons dit, on a le Prime Minister, ça a eu l'occasion de étudier le dossier. We are going to take a decision qui va engager l'île Maurice pendant les 25 ans, 50 ans à venir. If we go for this uh, technology, if we go for this combined cycle gas turbines, and once we put our finger dans cet engrenage, we have to move, to move on to the natural liquefied LNG. Ça va nous engager pendant cinq ans. And I'm not convinced that a small place like Mauritius at this stage can do it. I hope so. And I must say, I don't know if the Honorable Prime Minister has noted the thing. Last week, Seychelles decided Little Seychelles decided to move ahead with a storage facility for LNG in the Seychelles. I'm not, I'm not very convinced, I must say, but that was the last week. I agree that we must look into the combined cycle gas turbine uh, question, but let's be very, very, very careful. If we choose the wrong, uh, we will lose a lot, a lot of money. And if we stick now, if we move to the combined, it's not combined at the start, it will be a single uh, cycle gas turbine, but it is supposed to move, otherwise it's not economic at all. But if we, if we, if we do not move to the LNG, the import for the CBN, uh, probably for the whole of the country, but we're going to end up in, 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 big, in big trouble. Therefore, I would, I would uh, request uh, government to, to look very carefully, both the minister concerned and the prime minister, to look very carefully at this whole issue of the combined cycle gas turbines and LNG derrière, derrière la porte, because it's a strategic decision that will cost a lot uh, of money and that we must be very, very clear-headed about this. Tuna, Madam Speaker, I consider that this uh, dossier has been very mishandled. Let me say one thing, uh, Madam Speaker. We started in 2000-2005. We started the so-called seafood hub. <laughs> Essentially, what is it? Canning of tuna. And now, some 8,000 people work in that sector. It's a vital sector. We are, our exports are in big trouble. If our tuna canning factory runs into serious trouble, we will be, we will be in even more trouble. 
But I'm always amazed by two things. One, that people do not realize when we started the seafood hub. We were aware of that, that unfortunately these damn fish, Madam Speaker, they don't come in commercial quantity in our commercial zone. <coughs> Tuna goes round the Indian Ocean every year. It goes round Mozambique, Somalia, Seychelles especially. But not Mauritius, you have some tuna, but not in commercial qu qu quantity at all. There are all this tuna that we can. We import, but to import all this tuna to employ 8,000 people, we must have this tuna. And we are running into trouble. Because ça ne pouvait pas durer. In the Mediterranean, you have no tuna. Commercial tuna, I'm saying, eh, sports tuna, and so on, it's something else. But commercial for cutting purposes. You don't have any in the, in the North Atlantic also. And now it's biting into the Indian Ocean. Now measures are being taken to preserve tuna in the Indian Ocean. You have a limit on catches. And people do not realize that all this tuna that is caught and that we purchase is caught mostly, mainly, by European personnel with satellites, with helicopters. You must look at that. But inevitably, la ressource est en train de s'épuiser. And now, so I, I hope that the, the Prime Minister and the others are aware that the Europeans have their own interests. We cannot, we Mauritians, with our canning factory, with our 8,000 uh, people working, we cannot rely. We have good French friends. We need them. We need to purchase tuna from them. But we must rely on ourselves. It's a terribly tough business, this business of uh, tuna canning. Tuna catching. And we are in trouble. I advise the Honorable Prime Minister and government to be very careful about this whole tuna situation. We are already in trouble. It is a very complicated dossier to understand it. It's, let's be very, very, and we, until now, have been mostly relying on our French friends, on our European friends, to do the work for us. We must do it ourselves. I'm very worried about that also. But I take the opportunity to say something which has always disturbed me a bit, is that we talk about fisheries in Mauritius. You have no fisheries in Mauritius. You have different kinds of fisheries. And the problems of one part of the fisheries sector are not the same as, as elsewhere. You have lagoon fishing with our lagoons having been exhausted, now picking up, and with great difficulty. You have lagoon fishing. You have outside lagoons fishing, including with fads, food, food, fish aggregating uh, devices. Well, you fish outside, put around devices, and so on. That's the second kind. The third kind is bank fishing. Nazareth. Saya de Mala, Saint Brandon. And then you have tuna, whatever tuna there is in your economic zone. So you have different sorts of fishing in Mauritius. And when we mix it all together, we, we, we mix the problems of one of these four sectors to, to the others. We think, for example, that tuna, our problems in tuna can be solved by, by, by bank fishing. It's not the same fish. It's not the same thing at all. It's not the kind, same method of fishing. It's not the same fish. It's not the, the, the same uh, markets. So I would advise the government to be very careful as far as this issue of tuna is concerned. We are already in trouble. Mieux vaut tard que jamais. I don't speak. Uh, so. I would move on now to what I consider to be three bad decisions. Carrément bad decisions. One is the passport uh, and citizenship. I won't repeat a lot that has uh, been said. I hope 
that the government, I hope that the Prime Minister, the government, will not go ahead with the project uh, that has been presented as far as passports and citizenship for foreigners are concerned. I appeal to government not to go ahead with what has been proposed until now. I was talking about fisheries a few minutes ago, and I consider the second very bad decision which has been taken is supposedly to open our fishing banks. There's a lot of confusion that has been created. We are talking about what, at least what the minister, what the honorable prime minister spoke, he spoke about fishing banks, Nazareth, uh, Saya de Mala, uh, Saint Brandon, our fishing banks. Do not repeat les erreurs du passé. <laughs> Yesterday I was looking at a press conference with myself and Sanuru Jag that we held in the early 80s when the fishing banks were being pillés. Foreign boats, I won't say which boat, but well, I can say because uh, it no longer exists, uh, the Soviet Union, but it was Soviet boats. They were fishing on, the, on those banks. We had no means to, uh, to, to surveille. They were using the most negative methods, scraping the bottom, the bottom of the bank, killing cor the corals on, on the banks, and so on. Un crime a été commis pendant je... We are in danger of this starting again, eh? because you can't really, even if we have equipment now, if, even if our Indian friends are, are helping us a lot, but you can't really supervise those uh, fish, fishing banks. And I'm worried about saint Bernard also. What's happening on saint Bernard? I'm not saying that as in the past, I'm saint Bernard must be reserved for, for an elite. I'm not saying that at all. But if you open saint Bernard without due precautions, it can be the end of saint Bernard within a, within a few years. And there are things happening. I am dead against this idea, especially the words used by the, uh, right honorable, by the Honorable Prime Minister, opening our fishing banks to industrial foreign vessels. The last thing to do. The most dangerous uh, thing to do, and I appeal to government. I'm not, I'm not surprised. They were a bit slow to get going. But today, both the operators, the small operators, Mauritian operators, I mean, and the fishermen concerned, they are all against, completely, and rightly so, against this idea of opening this, the, our fishing banks to industrial uh, foreign uh, vessels. The third decision which I consider awful, dangerous also, is handing over the safe city project to Mauritius Telecom, Telecom instead of the police. If it's a police project, it should be handled uh, by the police. But I, for budgetary reasons, but also for security reasons, I am dead against the idea of handing the, the so-called safe city uh, project to Mauritius Telecom. Now, Sika, allow me now to say a few questions, uh, to, to raise a few issues that do raise a number of questions. The first one is the 6,800 social housings that are supposed to be uh, constructed over the, the next two years. I listened, of course, carefully to what I not only listen to what an honorable uh, Xavier, the honorable leader of the opposition, said, but I, I got an extra, because I couldn't believe my ears. And it, 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 there's, there's no demanty, and I don't understand either why no, no paper reported it. Not one paper. But if, if, if what was said by the honorable leader of the opposition is true, it's very disturbing. <laughs> Supposedly these, these 6,800 hours are being are going supposedly to be uh, constructed by a company created and owned finally by the army 
of a great country, friendly country. But that's not my point. So what, what's the, and I tell you, I'm, I don't understand Mauritius sometimes. The honorable leader of the opposition says that very seriously and with due precaution. Not one, from what I saw, not one paper <laughs> did or chose to report. And we, we don't, don't hear any, we don't hear anything anymore. On what conditions? Is it the government of China? Is it <laughs> really the army? The People's Liberation of China? Is, is it a government grant loan? What mix? Will there be tenders? Will be restricted to, to Chinese companies? But we, we are adult enough to know, to be given the, the truth. And I don't understand, I tell you honestly, I don't understand how there has, from what I heard, there has been no reaction from government. I hope that the uh, Honorable Prime Minister will tell us later on, what is this thing? Where will the money come from and what conditions? What company will be involved and, and so on? We have a right uh, to know, especially after what the Honorable Leader of the Opposition said. If it's not Lanka and in Maldives as far as harbors are concerned. We have to be very careful. China is a friendly, stand, friendly country, one of the countries where our people came from in the past. Great country. But I would be very happy to have a company controlled by a foreign country in the mouth, at the mouth of our only island. That raises security reasons also. So, when the uh, honorable minister said a few years back, no, that, this, long, this, this, long, this idea is no longer on, <coughs> I was soulagé. But now in the budget speech, you have just three words. That there will be a new fishing port at Les Salines. I don't think, it, it, is it Les Salines that they say, or... Huh? For William. Well, it's the same place. It's the same area. Yeah. So now in the, in the budget speech, there is one little sentence that bring, brings back this idea of a fishing port at the mouth of our only uh, harbor. So again, we're entitled to know is it the same project? Is it a Chinese project? Which company are we talking about? Or are we talking about? another uh, company, another project, especially when you have security considerations <coughs> to be kept uh, in mind, we have a right. That is why I'm, I'm raising questions, I'm putting uh, questions. Agalega, I think it's very unhealthy what is taking place. All sorts of uh, insinuations, all sorts of, <laughs> because we don't know the truth, but tell the whole truth. Even if government doesn't want to give a copy of the agreement, but give all the details. I'm sure that uh, the Prime Minister and the others are aware of what has just 
taken place. And there are a lot of lessons in that for us, what has just taken place in Seychelles. You have a small island called Assomption Island, the farthest away from the main island of Seychelles. Up there. It's next to, to the north of Madagascar. No human beings. So India and Seychelles signed an agreement. They agreed, they signed an agreement for, we won't call it a base, but for a military facility on Assumption Island. Supposedly, Seychelles gives the sovereignty. India will finance the whole, like they are financing in Agalega, and it will be jointly managed. That's when the trouble started. When it came out that in the agreement it will be uh, jointly managed by India, friendly country of the Indian Ocean, neighboring country, and uh, Seychelles. Trouble, big trouble, because uh, uh, the opposition, others, uh, even in government, I must say, said, no, look, if, if, if there is going to be joint, uh, joint management, we are losing our, our sovereignty. So it's off. It's off. It's, uh, the, the Seychelles government has said, no, we, we won't agree at all. We'll do a Coast Guard facility for ourselves on Assumption Island. I must say that uh, an added complication is that Assumption is not far from Aldabra, which is uh, before, before some kind of trouble erupts, which I do not wish at all. But tell us exactly what is, going, is there going to be in Agalega if there is only going to be a piste d'atterrissage, a mini airport, plus uh, a jetty. That's all. No boots on the ground, give us a guarantee. No boots on the ground, no arms on the ground. And then the thing will cool down if we give all uh, the rea reassurances and clarifications uh, required. As I said, I think we have lessons to learn from this assumption episode. And, and it's not finished. I think today the president of the Seychelles is in, is in India on official visit. But he has said, no, he's not going to discuss this assumption uh, issue again. So let's take whatever lessons we can take from this episode. Let's get rid of this agarega uh, issue. Let's clarify uh, everything. Another point which I wanted to, to clarify, the cancer center, the new cancer center. Why? Will the construction thereof, the financing thereof, go through a new thing called the SIC Development Company Limited? Why? We have already lost, it, uh, lost a, lot, a lot of time. And it is urgent. People are suffering. People have to travel to India. And thanks to India. But it's not easy. Parents have to pay for their own traveling. For, it's difficult. You go, I, I, I've been a cancer patient. When you go overseas for cancer treatment, radiotherapy, it's not easy. Now uh, they have to travel to a foreign uh, country. And some of them without their parents, without any, any parents. Therefore, we must complete this project. But tell me, reassure me, that this idea of, of constructing, financing the cancer center through the SIC Company Limited, SIC Development Company Limited, is not going to make us waste time again or create other problems. Next point is Musée de l'Esclavage. Good. The other day, I, I, I appreciated the fact that when I raised something, I've forgotten even what it is, but the, the Honorable Prime Minister said, no, that's a mistake. A misprint in the, at the back of the budget. It's, that's okay. Right? It's, it's okay. But in this case, please clarify again. Because the, the, the Honorable Prime Minister, in his speech, said, I am, I quote, 
at paragraph 103, he says, I am also providing funds for an intercontinental slavery museum at the ex la military. I am also providing funds, but there are no funds. The intention is good, probably. But, but no, there is another little mistake. There are no funds provided anywhere in the, in the budget, and the minister had to uh, go uh, to the press, and, and in a way to say that there, is, there are no funds provided, because it's too early. There, there are going to be preliminary inquiries now. Well, well, then tell us. What is the problem? How long will it take? At least we have funds for this preliminary inquiry for the Musée de l'Esclavage. And for God's sake, let's not wait another two, three years before we start work, before funds are really uh, provided. Terre Rouge. Terre Rouge, uh, Verdun. Again, another, I, I don't want to be nasty, but I'm just pointing out <laughs> that there are a few mistakes like that. There was one uh, which I referred to earlier. Now, on Terre Rouge Verdun, in, in the, I, I noted, you know how I work, Madam Speaker, some time back, I, I remember that, that some time back, uh, parliamentary question 24th of April, the Honorable Minister Bouda said it will be completed before the end of this year. And then when I listened to the uh, budget speech, he said next year. Now, it, it appears that it's another mistake. Fair enough, it's not the end of the world. Uh, uh, such mistakes, and we mieux clarifier, we mieux éviter et uh, clarifier. But when we have clarifier, tell us how much it's going to cost these additional magical pillage. I believe 500 million rupees. We'll see. We'll see. And secondly, uh, is there full agreement? When you go to also consultants all over the place, there are boundaries that agree. When you go to for South African consultants, Singaporean consultants, Korean consultants, and finally French consultant. This is the magical piloty professor. He came, he has seduit the Minister Bouda. He has trouvé la solution miracle. Piloty all over the place. Okay. Are we in agreement or is it really being challenged by others? Is it being challenged from my information, being challenged by the Korean? And I wouldn't be surprised. And when the Korean finish challenging, we'll have the Singaporeans challenging the, the, uh, the Korean. So let us please tell us what is exactly the situation. Roughly how much, because he, replying, as I said earlier on, replying to the, on, on the 24th of April, he said, I can quote, he, he knows how I work, he, he, he said, and he likes speaking too much, he likes listening to himself so much. He told us, Professor, I forgot his name, Malan? Magnan. Presque plein Magnan. Professor Magnan will be back on tell that. I'm sorry, just to remind you that you have 10 additional minutes to wrap up, please. 10 additional minutes. 10. Who decides that? Because I was informed that there is no limit on my intervention. No. no. I, I am sorry. Uh, please say that. I'm sorry. No. Let me, let me tell you. Okay, I'll stop. But it's very easy. No, but okay, okay. You rule. I don't know what instructions are coming in. Okay, no. I'll stop. I'll stop. No, not, to, not stop. I tell you that you have 10 additional minutes. Just to remind you that, you know, we asked honorable members, and I made an announcement to ask honorable members. Yes, but to we should be one. Here to the time allotted. I have been spe specifically told that no. there is no limit. I have another 15 minutes. But it's unfair. But, uh, Dans la I procedure, it's unfair. It's I think unfair. it will be unfair to a rubber man. Very, very, very unfair. But, in fact, I'll wrap up. 
I'll say uh, a few <laughs> comments on drug trafficking and uh, corruption. On drug trafficking, I think we've had enough all uh, as, as if doing fantastic things. Look, let us regard the verity dans les yeux. This is the first time in Mauritius where international drug trafficking is organized from the prison. Everybody knows that. And even that we can't stop. And, and, and the uh, Honorable Prime Minister se tape l'estomac, la, 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 la lutte contre, contre la, le trafic de la drogue. But this is the first time that more or less openly international draft uh, drug trafficking is taking place in the prison, organized from, from the uh, prison. What has just taken place in the Vakwa detention center? It's a shame. And not only has this taken place, but after all this has taken place, the telephone of the person concerned is tripoté, is deleted. That's today. Adsu is not trusted both in Réunion and in Madagascar, including the, the, the most recent case of more than 500 uh, million rupees. Et le com, it's of course when the commission of police himself to obtain urgently a passport. Here they write on all prime minister knows what are the procedures. Exceptional to get urgently a passport. In this case, this chap gets his passport within days. Urgent procedure. So that is why we say the, uh, le bon exemple n'est pas donné, le bon signal n'est pas envoyé. On corruption, it's a bit shocking that for the second year running, presenting the budget. The, the, don't tell me that it doesn't concern the budget because it's the uh, uh, Honorable Prime Minister who mentioned drug trafficking, rightly so. But in the case of uh, uh, corruption, that is the second year running that there, there is not a word on corruption in the, in the budget. Et pourtant, it's part of the economic setup. And Madam Speaker, Assets Act. Where is the Assets Act? We would have expected in, this, in the budget to be informed what progress has been achieved with the new uh, Assets Act. Financing of political parties. Again, I must say I'm worried about a lot of things. I'm worried about money politics in Mauritius. We don't have a right to treat our democracy and our kids like that. Money politics and dirty money politics. Drug money. Races and money. Corruption money. Are corrupted our political system itself. And at least government said that you have an intention of coming forward with a law to control the financing of political uh, parties. We expected it to be in uh, that question. I'll conclude, Madam, because uh, you have rule. Uh, Madam Speaker, let me conclude by repeating what I said earlier on, by repeating that I am very worried for the economy of the country. I sincerely hope I am proved wrong in the months ahead. Le signal d'alarme, les signaux d'alarme que j'ai tirés tout à l'heure, I sincerely hope, as a Mauritian, as a patriot, that I, I am wrong and that I am proved wrong. But to me, it is obvious with my experience, with the, the amount of, of time I spend studying, discussing with top experts and so on, it is obvious to me, Madam Speaker, that the next two years, will be crucial for our economy. Those next two years will decide the fate, the economic fate of our country for quite a number of years. I repeat, I'm convinced that these two forthcoming years, those two next years, will be absolutely crucial for our economy for the reasons which I gave 
earlier on. Madam Speaker, the slaves and indentured laborers of the past and all those men and women who have helped shape the destiny of our country over the last 300 years and the youth of Mauritius expect all of us to rise to the occasion at this juncture that I'm talking about, to rise to the occasion at a time when we have just celebrated the 50th anniversary of our independence. Thank you, Madam.